You've been lied to about your car's stop-start system. Think it's saving you fuel? Think again. This so-called eco-friendly feature might be doing more harm than good, and nobody's telling you the full story. Before you trust what the manufacturers say, let's break down the shocking truth behind stop-start systems. You need to hear this. Today, we're diving into a topic that doesn't get nearly enough attention, the hidden problems with stop-start systems. You've probably noticed this feature in almost every new car these days. It's marketed as a fuel-saving, eco-friendly miracle, but is it really as great as it sounds? Let's break it down and uncover the truth. What's the deal with stop-start systems? First, let's talk about what this technology is supposed to do. The idea is simple. When you come to a stop at a red light or in traffic, your engine shuts off to save fuel and reduce emissions. Then, as soon as you take your foot off the brake or press the accelerator, the engine roars back to life. On paper, this sounds like a fantastic innovation. More fuel efficiency, lower carbon footprint, and less pollution in urban areas. But as with most things in the automotive world, the reality is a little more complicated. Beneath the surface, this system comes with drawbacks that car manufacturers don't always talk about. Let's peel back the layers and see what's really going on. The big concern, wear and tear. Car manufacturers will tell you they've upgraded the starters and batteries to handle the additional strain of frequent engine restarts. And sure, they have. But here's what they aren't telling you. Oil pressure issues. Every time your engine starts up, there's a brief moment where oil pressure hasn't fully built up. Normally in a car without a stop-start system, this happens maybe once or twice a day, when you start the car in the morning and maybe again in the evening. But with stop-start systems, this process happens dozens of times in a single commute. This is especially concerning for turbocharged engines, where oil is crucial for both lubrication and cooling. When the engine constantly stops and starts, the delay in oil circulation can lead to premature wear on vital components like the turbocharger and engine bearings. Over time, this can lead to costly repairs that completely outweigh any fuel savings. Battery and starter problems. Yes, cars with stop-start systems use advanced AGM absorbent glass mat batteries and heavy-duty starters designed to handle frequent cycling. But guess what? These parts come at a premium price. AGM batteries can cost twice as much as standard car batteries and don't necessarily last three times longer to justify the expense. Moreover, if you've ever dealt with a failing starter motor, you know how annoying and expensive it can be to replace. A conventional car starter might last for 100,000 to 150,000 starts, while a stop-start vehicle could hit that number in just a few years. When the system inevitably wears out, guess who foots the bill? Yep, the car owner. Real-world annoyances, the everyday headaches. Beyond the long-term mechanical issues, stop-start systems can also be incredibly frustrating for daily driving. Here's why. Engine restart delay. Picture this. You're sitting at a red light. It turns green. You hit the gas and wait and wait. The engine finally kicks back on. But by then, the car behind you is already honking. While modern systems have improved, this delay is still noticeable in many vehicles, particularly in older or budget-friendly models. If you're in stop-and-go traffic or trying to make a quick left turn, that hesitation can be both annoying and dangerous. The AC problem. Say goodbye to cool air. Here's a fun one. Your air conditioning system typically relies on the engine to run the compressor. So, when the engine shuts off, so does your AC. Some newer cars have electric AC compressors, but many do not. This means you could be stuck sweating in summer traffic, all for the sake of saving a few cents in fuel not exactly a great trade-off, right? Not all fuel savings are worth it. Now, let's talk numbers. How much fuel are you actually saving? 
Most studies show that stop-start systems can save about 10% in city driving. Sounds good, right? Let's do the math. Suppose you drive 10,000 miles per year in the city. Your car gets 30 miles per gallon. Gas costs $4 per gallon. That means you're saving about $133 per year on fuel. Now, here's the kicker. A single replacement AGM battery can cost anywhere from $200 to $400. If your battery lasts just a few years, it completely wipes out your fuel savings. Not to mention the cost of a new starter motor, which can run upwards of $500 to $1,000 when labor is included. In other words, the money you save on gas often gets eaten up by repair costs. My take on stop-start systems, should you use it? If you're buying a new car, before purchasing a new vehicle, check if the stop-start system can be permanently disabled. Some models allow you to turn it off, while others reactivate it every time you restart the car. Knowing this ahead of time could save you some serious frustration if you already have a car with stop-start. Be strategic. Here's how you can manage it smartly. In heavy stop-and-go traffic, you might leave it on to maximize fuel savings. For quick stops or hot weather, consider turning it off to keep your AC running and reduce engine wear. Plan for the long haul. If you plan on keeping your car for several years, budget for higher maintenance costs. That means setting aside money for AGM battery replacements, changing your oil more frequently to minimize wear, being prepared for starter motor failures down the line. The bottom line? Stop-start technology isn't entirely bad. It does have its advantages in reducing emissions and saving fuel in dense urban areas. However, it's not the magical fuel-saving solution that manufacturers make it out to be. At its core, stop-start systems are really just a way for automakers to meet government emissions regulations cheaply. The long-term costs, worn-out starters, expensive batteries, delayed acceleration, and sweaty summer drives are passed on to the consumer. So, what do you think? Are stop-start systems worth the hassle? Or are they more trouble than they're worth? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this helpful, share it with a friend who might be wondering the same thing. Stay safe out there, and remember, knowledge is the best tool in your toolbox. Catch you next time.